I learned recently that girls' brains develop, and also the prefrontal cortex, faster than boys by a couple of years. So I thought that was super interesting too. And that might also indicate why the boys in the class are more disruptive than the girls. And and so those are the kind of threads. Yeah. So, okay. The Insofar as the brain, I mean, when we think of executive functioning growth and development, which ties in with prefrontal cortex development right. over time, I think an easy way for people to, to understand this is maturity, right? Mm-hmm. So we think of individuals becoming more mature as they grow. And of course, in the normal growth in our society, you know, they have some responsibility in elementary school, more independence and responsibility in high school, even more in post-secondary, whether that's work or apprenticeship or college or university, and then even more as full functioning adults, hopefully living independently, right? And on the biological side, the prefrontal cortex is growing and developing, right? And that's providing the infrastructure for more maturity, which we could define as better executive functioning, right? So a lot of girls become more mature than, like mature earlier than boys. And, you know, boys with ADHD, if they're like, let's say nine years old, their prefrontal cortex may be similar to a non-ADHD individual of seven years old or six years old. So they seem quite immature. Where a girl of nine years old may have the executive functioning of a boy of 11 or 12, right? They're more (laughs) mature. Um, So I think it's important to think about that. Um, Girls with ADHD, yeah, I mean, their prefrontal cortex may grow a little more slowly compared to other girls who don't have right, ADHD. Right, right. I, I can't say I can think of or have read a study that specifically compared girls' development versus boys and things like that. I'd have to look for a reference, but I think on basic principles, I hope that helps people understand that. Yeah. Um, and so far as the difference between boys and girls, and I'm glad there's so much more information out there about this now. We've kind of known this in the field for 20 plus years, as long as I've been in it or longer. Uh, And it's much more known now, which is great because I see a lot of women coming in for ADHD assessment saying, I never really thought I had ADHD because I'm not a hyperactive little boy who gets in trouble kind of thing. But now that I've seen online or people told me, or I read articles, I realize it's different in women. And here are my concerns. And I'm like, yes, that is totally ADHD, right? So in kids, boys with ADHD tend to have more hyperactivity girls tend to have more inattention. So boys get noticed because they're hyper. Girls may daydream. The other thing is when a boy is hyperactive, he's more likely to disrupt the whole classroom. When a girl is hyperactive, she's much more likely to be a chatty Kathy who's too social and goes to visit her friends too much. So Susie, stop being so social, get back to your desk and do your desk and do your work, right? So it's not like you've got a problem that needs to see the doctor immediately. It's more... You're just being too social where the boy who has hyperactivity disrupts the class. And, you know, when it comes to ADHD, almost everybody has at least one other coexisting condition, right? In kids, 75% of kids and teens have at least one other diagnosis. In adults, it's 85 or more uh, percent of people have at least another diagnosis. So with boys, it's much more likely to have a behavior problem, oppositional defiant disorder, challenging authority not listening, disrupting. So then the boys end up hyperactive and behaviorally challenging. The teachers say, get to the doctor, right? (laughs) Um, With the girls with ADHD, they're inattentive and they tend to be a little more emotional rather than behavioral. So they're inattentive. If they're hyperactive at all, they're too social, too chatty. And then, you know, if they have behavior issues or sorry, coexisting conditions, they are more emotional, moody, anxious, And unfortunately, and I cringe inside to say this, and please, women, girls, females, anybody listening to this, please don't think this is my belief. But I think in general, people think, oh, she's just being dramatic, right? Like she's just being, you know, a dramatic, you know, social girl, whatever, and she just needs to sit down. And I cringe saying it because I hate it so much, the judgment that's there and the lack of understanding and support. Um, In women... And I, you know, the interesting thing I see with women, just to share some clinical frontline things. So I can say, yes, yeah, similar thing, more inattentive, or if hyperactive, it's not the totally disruptive type, uh, less aware of it than men. Women, for the most part, and one can't always generalize, but for the most part in our society, women 
get more of the child care, more of the home care responsibilities, things like that, and kind of have to run the home. Now, if you've got ADHD, so men could kind of, if, if it's a heterosexual couple, you know, right, right. together, um, the man may go to work and come home and say, I've contributed a lot and go rest. Where women generally deal with the kids, go to work, come home, do everything else. Hopefully men, but it's almost one of these things. If the men help out a lot, it's kind of like, oh, what a good guy he's helping. Or if the woman's doing all the stuff, it's kind of like, well, that's just expected, right? And yeah, yeah. it's not it's always the a, case and it shouldn't no, but be, but Yeah, no, it is, it's a huge, right? we, just to comment on that briefly, women today are having, there's a huge double standard for them in that exact context that you're saying. Yeah. And we have to work through that as a society somehow. And absolutely. It's another incredibly interesting topic for yeah. sure. But yeah, yeah, it's hard. Well, and you know what? And I, I'm just going to come right out and say it. Yeah. I blame Martha Stewart. Okay. <laughs> Not because of her insider trading and going to jail. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny. She hangs with Snoop Dogg. But yeah. <laughs> what I'm talking about is like the bloody TV shows that say if you don't have the Halloween napkin rings on Halloween, that you're a horrible woman and a horrible mother and a horrible spouse or partner or anything. Right. right? And I'm saying it only slightly tongue in cheek because women who are just women in general in our society feel tremendous pressure to be the professional the spouse, the parent, the partner, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the homemaker who has all the wonderful treats and specials and goodies that Martha Stewart says so. Right? And it's not just Martha Stewart. I'm just for being sure, a little for sure. Cheap, She's a good archetype. <laughs> for sure. And then, yeah. but then you have add ADHD into the pressures of women. And now you have trouble focusing. You're forgetful. You're disorganized. You have trouble doing your home. And if guys are disorganized and have piles all over the place, oh, well, I kind of close the door. Or I don't really care. I never cleaned up when my mom asked me. But if women have piles uh, all over the place or disorganization, the shame that goes with it is horrible. And so many women have this internal thought that if my home isn't organized, I don't deserve to go out and have fun with my friends or be social because I should be home cleaning and other sorts of thoughts that are not necessarily valid, but torture them. Yeah, and then you yeah. throw kids in the in there too, and now you got to be the mum with the most. You got to have. Oh, I love the movie Bad Moms. It's hilarious, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whether that's somebody's cup of tea or not, it's just sort yeah. of like I'm not going to have the perfect gluten free muffins at the bake sale, and yeah. I'm not going to attend all the PTA meetings, and I'm not. My kids aren't going to have the perfect lunch, and screw you who expect me to, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So I see a lot of women who find out about ADHD through social media and realize they actually have symptoms, even though they didn't realize it. And the other thing is many people become aware of the impairment of their ADHD as life demands change, right? So sometimes right, it's going right. from elementary school to high school and there are more demands, less structure, more independence. Sometimes it's going from high school to post-secondary. Sometimes it's post-secondary to workforce. In a lot of women I've seen recently, it's children, right? They have children and all of a sudden, all the coping strategies they used to do to keep them on track are thrown out the window. You know, one woman described it perfectly where she said, I used to be disorganized all week. My house would become chaos. I would be behind on everything. And then Saturday morning, I'd get up and I'd spend six hours cleaning my home, going through the mail, dealing with bills, dealing with all the loose ends that had to be dealt with. And then I have a child who I love to the ends of the world and I cannot take the time I need and I never catch up and I'm drowning. Right. And that becomes the trigger to say, I've got symptoms I can't manage here. The other thing I know I'm, I'm maybe I'm talking too long, but no. what I'm trying to help my adult psychiatry colleagues to understand in our field as a whole is a lot of people with difficult to treat depression, hard to treat anxiety. They're not doing well enough because there's ADHD that hasn't been recognized. Right. And you got to figure out, is there a, not that ADHD is the cause of all depression? Not at all. Right. Like, let's not overstate this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a colleague in Toronto, Dr. Martin Katzman, published a study, I think it was 2016, where he was looking at adults with treatment resistant depression and screening them and assessing them for ADHD. He found 34% of adults coming to a specialty mood clinic with hard to treat depression had undiagnosed ADHD. Of course, when he starts treating the ADHD, they get a lot better. So a third, you know, it, that's very significant.